So let's go from the Macaulay duration now to something called a modified duration. And this is very easy. Remember I said at the beginning, everything starts with Macaulay duration, right? We call this a mod dur. And it equals MACDUR, MACDUR, divided by 1 plus R. That's all it is. So we know that our Macaulay duration was 7.0029, and our R was 10.4, so 1 plus R is 1.104. And if we do that, we get 6.3432. Now, modified duration is expressed as a percent. This is expressed, the Macaulay duration is expressed in periods, which we can annualize into years. Once we divide it by the discount allowance, when we modify it, it's expressed as a percentage. And this is the estimated, is the estimate, or the estimated price change for a bond given a change in its own in its own yield to maturity so it's the estimated price change for a bond given a change in its own yield to maturity so what it's saying is remember the price of our bond was 85.305075 it's saying that if there is a 1% chance, 1% change, either from 10.4 up to 11.4, or from 10.4 down to 9.4, we would experience a 6.3432% change in the price of the bond. So that's what that is saying. So that if R increases 1%, PV full, the price of the bond will decrease 6.3432%. Remember, there's an inverse relationship here. Well, we're not quite there yet. We're not quite done. This is nice. This is nice. But I want you to understand that this is a linear estimate. It is a linear estimate. There is no convexity assumed in the curve whatsoever. It is a linear estimate, so it gets close. And since it's a linear estimate, there is a convexity adjustment that we'll get to later on. Just understand there's a convexity adjustment, which will give it greater precision. Isn't this beautiful so far? Nice and simple. We're walking through each of the steps. So, Macaulay duration, becomes, which is expressed in years, moves over to modified duration by dividing it by 1 plus the discount rate to get an estimate, a linear estimate, of the change in the full price of the bond given a 1% change in the bond's own yield to maturity. Again, don't worry about the, the yield uh, a duration versus a curve duration. I am getting to that. and. But it means it'll, it'll be easier to understand when I do get to it if I take this route. So, we're good here. Let's move on. Well, let's look at convexity. We've already done uh, duration based on a linear assumption of the bond price yield curve. Now we're going to do it the right way. We're going to show as we uh, see in the graph at the top of the screen here, that there is a convex relationship between the price and the yield to maturity of the bond. So we're going to take that into consideration. So to set the stage for what we're doing here, um, let's, uh, let's just look at what we, what we know so far and then take off from there. The price change in uh, the present value of a bond due to duration is, if you recall, if we increase our yield by a certain amount of basis points, or if we decrease our yield by a certain amount of basis points, the price changes. And if we have a, a uh, price change from, this is called just due to duration, all we're doing is we're, is we're extending the price up to, so this was PV naught, so we're just extending it up to the tangent line that existed. Notice that there's a gap between the tangent line and the actual curve for the bond price. 
And for an increase in yield, we calculate it from the present value down to the tangent curve. So we sort of overshoot uh, on, the, uh, on an increase in the yield. Well, what convexity does is it then adjusts our estimates to reach the curve. So on a decrease in, uh, in yield, uh, the new price of the bond is understated. So our convexity correction will add to that. Whereas in an increase in yield, our present value is also understated. It should be higher. So the convexity correction also corrects for that. So here's what it looks like in total. And it's actually not that intimidating. It looks intimidating, but it isn't. The percentage change in the full price of the bond is, and notice this is not an equal sign, it's approximately part one, the annual modified duration times the change in yield. We've already seen this. Remember, modified duration gives us a measure of the percentage change in the price of a bond, assuming a vertical, uh, sorry, a, uh, a straight line relationship between price and yield. That's what that will give us. And then, of course, times the change in yield. This is only due to duration, called a first order effect. Here is our convexity adjustment on this side, which is one half the annual convexity. And we'll get to what that is. We'll just, just put a placeholder in there now as to, well, what does that mean? We'll get to it. One half the annual convexity times the change in yield squared. Now, if you are familiar with how this would have been arrived at with calculus, you'll notice that this right here is this point. This is the first derivative of this curve. It's the derivative of that point. Whereas this is the second derivative, which gives us the rate of change along the curve, which is why we have a squared, because this is a linear relationship. This will be a curved linear relationship. That's due to convexity. That's our second order effect. Notice that convexity will always correct the price of the bond in a positive direction. So if the yield increases, if we have a change in basis points that's positive, we will get a negative effect on the first order effect. In other words, the present, the full price of the bond will drop with a rise in rates. And the convexity adjustment will correct it back up to the curve. So see the green arrow comes down to the red line, which is the tangent line. And then the orange arrow from the tangent line back up to the curve corrects it. If we have a drop in yield, a change, a negative change in basis point, the full price of the bond will increase, but not enough to reflect the convexity. So there is a positive adjustment. Now, we can see that if the change is very, very small around the tangent line, very, very small, the convexity adjustment will tend towards zero. And the convexity adjustment increases the bigger the change in yield that we're measuring. So for very small changes in yield, for instance, the Federal Reserve, as of September of 2015, uh, held rates constant. If they're thinking of increasing rates, many think it might be just 10 basis points. Or instead of the full 25 basis points, half of that. Well, that's a very small increase in, in, in uh, a very small change in rates. The convexity adjustment would tend to be very, very small as well for, for changes close to the first tangent point. <laughs>